when you think about it, if you change your energy levels, pigs eat to meet their energy requirements. They don't eat until they are full, like in the case of poultry. They eat until the energy requirements are full or, or met. So when you feed a low energy diet, pigs are going to eat more. If you feed more energy, pigs are going to eat less. So if you have a just the feed intake curve in pounds of feed and you change the energy, that curve may not be accurate. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Roman Moreno, a swine nutritionist for Seaboard Foods. So Roman, it's been a little while since you've been on the show. So before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Yep. Uh, well, very simple. Uh, I'm originally from Mexico. I got my bachelor's in animal science down there in Mexico, followed up by a um, uh, master's in ruminant nutrition, but it seems like I couldn't get a job working for ruminant. So after my master's, I got a couple of uh, uh, jobs working with uh, in production with swine systems in, in Mexico. Then I got the opportunity to move to Texas. I applied for a job here in Seaboard, I was a farm manager for a while, um, decided to go back to grad school and went to the University of Nebraska in Lincoln and got my PhD there in swine nutrition after decided that I was going to switch to swine, um, work uh, for a commercial uh, feed company in Illinois for a few years. And then the opportunity to come back to Seaboard came about 12 years ago as a swine uh, nutritionist, and I've been here since uh, 2012. So I feed a lot of pigs on a regular basis. Gotcha. So while talking about feeding pigs, let's talk a little bit about energy intake. So as you well know, whether we're in the nursery, finisher, sow farm, wherever, energy is one of the most obviously important nutrients in the pig's diet and needs to be well balanced based on costs and circumstances within the farm. So I guess to start us off, let's relate it back to feed intake. Why is knowing the expected feed intake so important when deciding on your energy level within the diet? You see, those those two, uh, and that's a very good point because those two are really connected. You can't separate feed intake from energy intake, but if you want to really be accurate and really know what's going on with your pigs from the intake standpoint, we need to have an energy intake curve. We can't stop in the feed intake because they are so closely re related. But when you think about it, if you change your energy levels, pigs eat to meet their energy requirements. They don't eat until they are full, like in the case of poultry. They eat until the energy requirements are full or, or met. So when you feed a low energy diet, pigs are going to eat more. If you feed more energy, pigs are going to eat less. So if you have a just the feed intake curve in pounds of feed and you change the energy, that curve may not be accurate. And here's where the importance of feed intake and energy intake comes into play. If you are feeding a high energy diet and your pigs eat less, all your formulation is balanced to provide the nutrients based on feed intake. And if the intake is short, then you're going to be short in every other nutrient that you're trying to provide to your pigs. And that, in my point of view, is why knowing your energy intake is so important. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of like you said, I mean, when they have a higher energy level, they're definitely going to eat less, but you typically see that um, increased feed efficiency. And yeah. there's that there's been that typical or that old saying or rule of thumb, if you will, that they say a one percent increase in dietary energy results in a one percent improvement in feed efficiency. So from your um, experiences, 
how accurate would you say that rule of thumb is? Is there any like exceptions to it with different times of the year or different ingredients or how, how I guess, yeah, just how accurate would you say that is? I, I will, I'm going to say it's really accurate. It does happen. If, if you increase your energy, you're going to see a response in efficiency. And normally we saw those, we, we look at those studies that add fat to the diets and, and efficiency improving. That's where the, the improvement of efficiency comes from, added energy. And I'm going to say there's a few exceptions. You need to look at your pigs. Uh, the results are going to be better or worse uh, if you're in winter, you're in summer season, the pigs are on heat stress or cold stress. Also, if you have pigs that are challenged from the health standpoint, you have sick pigs, they're going to use a lot of energy on trying to defend from the health challenge they have. And that energy is going to take from the energy they could use for, for gain. So they are going to use that energy for maintenance and that's going to affect the results. But I'm going to agree with that uh, rule that adding energy is going to improve feed efficiency. And it's almost, almost always happens. Gotcha. So to kind of break this up then, um, based on stage of production, starting with like the nursery and finisher phase, um, when developing an energy intake curve for the nursery and finisher phase, what are some considerations you already mentioned about like during the nursery phase, if their health challenge, they're going to be using more energy for maintenance. Um, but is there like one particular stage where it's more important to, um, accurately hit that target and how many phases would you say would be necessary within a commercial setting, um, to make sure you're accurately hitting that energy intake level, um, each time when balancing your rations? You know, if we have to pick a time where energy is absolutely critical between nursery and finishers, I will say the beginning of a nursery period. And the reason is pigs are too small and they normally are short. With the, with the amount of feed that they eat, they normally don't meet their energy requirements because the digestive system is too small compared to the body and they can't eat enough. It's not that they don't want to, they, they can't eat enough because they are so small and they are going to be always short. So this is where I, I'm, I'm saying it's really important to meet those energy requirements for baby pigs. You have to have a really high energy diet so, to provide the pigs the energy so they can at least get close to what they need. If you cut the energy, they're going to even they are not going to get even close to what they need. So the more energy you can put in the diet, the more you're going to help them to eat. Because in that case, in that first few weeks in the nursery, pigs don't have the physical capacity to eat what they need, even if you give them a high concentrated diet. That's when it's important. In a finisher pig, you're talk if we're talking about a 150-pound pig, you can cut, let's say, for whatever reason, if there's a storm, you don't get your tallow. You're going to cut the tallow and you're going to send a load of feed with no tallow or oil or choice white grease to a finisher farm, finisher barn, and pigs are 150 pounds. So your energy in the diet is going to be less. But those pigs are big enough that they are going to compensate by eating more. So from the energy standpoint, they are going to be okay. That's not going to happen with the little pig. If you if you cut the energy on a, on a nursery diet, they are going to eat exactly what they ate before, and they are going to be short in energy. So going back to the original question, that will be the most critical uh, uh, phase, the first few weeks of a nursery phase or period. Gotcha. So then transitioning a little bit to looking at um, the sow farm, so what are some um, considerations there when looking at gestating or lactating sows? Obviously, during the lactation period, it's pretty common to, you want to maximize feed intake altogether um, in order to increase milk yield. So yeah, what are some considerations when looking at the diets there? It, you know, the um, lactation and gestation are very interesting because gestation it's one of the few periods in the lifetime of a pig that we are going to restrict the feed intake. So we give them a specific amount of feed. They can't eat more. They can't 
normally they don't eat less, but they can't eat more. So if for whatever reason you are restricting, you are targeting a certain amount of energy that you want to feed to each one of your sows or gills when they are in gestation. But if you miscalculate the energy and you feed less, they are losing condition. Let's say you set your target to feed five pounds a day. Let's say six pounds a day. And you see your condition going down. We are not restricting feed intake. We are restricting energy intake. So at that point, you're going to have to improve, to add a little more energy, to bring those cells to condition. If you want to keep the same six pounds of feeding, and then the, the cells are going to improve to the point that you can just keep them in maintenance. But it's not, and that's what's interesting about gestation. You need to know the energy need, needs of your sow to feed that specific amount in a specific amount of feed. That's the interesting part. Now, moving to lactation, the issue with lactation, or not the issue, but the, the situation in lactation is they can eat all they want. They, fed, they are fed at libitum, free access to feed. But if the feed is low energy, the volume is just too much and they are not going to be able to eat enough. So you have to have a high energy, high protein diet so they can eat, physically eat all that feed to meet their needs. If you feed a diet in, in lactation that requires for those sows to eat 25 pounds to meet their energy needs, that's not going to happen. So you need to pack all that energy and all that, all that protein and that's why I always refer to gestation as a salad. The station feed is a salad, very healthy, lots of fiber. And if you look at the um, lactation diets, it's more like a steak and potatoes, you know, lots of energy, lots of protein. And uh, it's, it's obviously more uh, uh, tastier, at least in my my point of view. So that's, that's the difference. And, and, and that's something that, we tend to forget because in, in gestation, the animals are going to eat what you give them. You need to regulate that intake. And in some systems, they are just energy based on, on summer and winter because even inside the, um, the barns with climate control, in winter, some areas tend to be a little colder and, and it's difficult to, to keep those sows in condition with the same energy that you, you provide in, in summer. So... That's why it's important to, to really know your energy needs on gestation and not so much your feed intake needs. Gotcha. Yeah, that all makes perfect sense. But I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Roman, for coming on the show and sharing all your experiences with us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. And uh, uh, as usual, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to share uh, a couple of things that we have learned through the years in, in this job. Yeah, absolutely. And we appreciate it. But to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.